Hey, it's Christine Leahy. I have Michelle Ferre with me today. She is a fourth grade teacher in Maryland, hopefully going to give advice to a lot of the parents I've seen out there who are just not sure what to do right now. Michelle, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I know this is a crazy time for all of us, but especially for parents. Yeah, it's interesting because I see a lot of people complaining about being bored. Um, or just trying to figure out things to do. But on the other hand, you have parents who have kids who are now home. So they're having to be a teacher, work from home, do all of that at the same time. They're not, they're the opposite of bored. Yeah. yeah. What is the <laughs> first thing that you would say to them? The first thing I always tell parents, because I've had a lot reach out to me, whether it's my own students' parents or just other parents who are looking for advice from teachers, the first thing I always say is, you, you are more than capable to do this. You're more than capable to be a teacher because you've been teaching your kid since the day they were born. Like you were their first teacher. So even though you feel like you're thrown into this new role that you're unprepared for in reality, you've been doing this their whole life. So you can do it. You just have to have confidence in yourself. That's a really amazing message. <laughs> I had kids. I feel like I would be totally cool to go teach right now. Just, just from that. Um, are you yourself, so do, do, you, do you see a lot of teachers that are now teaching online, or do you think most parents are in the situation where they're essentially having a homeschool? I feel like it's a lot of parents homeschooling. I know there are some teachers who are teaching remotely, but it seems like a majority of parents either are not taking advantage of maybe those opportunities, or they don't have anything that's being provided by the teacher or the school or the district. I know personally, my district has been putting out their own lessons. So the teachers are not responsible for teaching remotely. I'm still trying to connect with my students online, but I know of a lot of districts that didn't have time to get all of this prepared because it happened so quickly. Right. So it seems like a lot of parents are having to just figure it out as they go um, and trying to come up with resources and trying to figure out what they were learning in school and adapting that for home. I'm seeing a lot of parents, they're trying to kind of create like a normal class schedule. Is that something that you recommend? So I think it depends on the kid. And my number one thing I would say is you're the parent, you know your kid best. There are kids who thrive on a schedule and keeping things consistent. So if your kid is like that, then try to keep a schedule and try to have it mirror the schedule that the kid was already following in school, because that's going to create the most consistency. However, not all kids need that strict schedule. And if that's the case, you can be more flexible with it. But just because a kid at school is spending seven hours doesn't mean you should be spending seven hours having them work on like actual academic stuff. Depending on the age range of the kid, I would say spend anywhere between an hour or two working on those actual hard academic skills, reading and writing and math, and then have the other time just be a time to be creative or have them be able to explore topics that they're interested in that they maybe don't get a chance to do while they're at school. I've seen um, some people say too, if your kid wants to sleep in, let them sleep in, do your work first, and then adjust the school day schedule based on that. No, I think that's perfect advice. I know personally, I've been using this time to kind of catch up on all the sleep that I don't get during the school year. So every kid is different. You have to figure out what works best for you. If your kid is an early riser, then maybe put them to bed a little bit early so that you could work on your work at nighttime. But if they're wanting to sleep in, you can absolutely use that to your advantage and get your work done in the morning. As a teacher yourself, I'm sure you've had to kind of figure out ways to manage your own stress or handle certain situations. How can parents take care of themselves right now while they're being teachers? I think it's okay to take those moments for yourself whenever you can find them. And I know personally as a teacher, I need that all the time. Like my kids are just a little too high strung. I'm like, all right, y'all need a moment. So turn down the lights, put on some soft music, have them just read a book, or if they've already been reading and they're not really motivated to read, put on a directed drawing. I know the author Mo Willems, who writes the Elephant and Piggy series, he's been doing these lunch doodles where he's oh. teaching kids how to draw characters from his stories, which is awesome. But YouTube is also full of directed drawing videos. There's one channel called Art Hub for Kids, and they have hundreds of videos that teach kids how to draw things and that way they can be quiet 
drawing and afterwards they can go back, they can color it. And then you as a parent can have some time to do whatever it is that you wanna do, whether that's binging a Netflix show, getting some cleaning done, or just taking a small nap. It occupies them so you can have that time for yourself. Okay, what about on the opposite end when the kids have just so much built up energy because they're <laughs> cooped up and you don't know what to do anymore? So obviously, if the weather is nice, get them outside as much as possible, but I understand that may not always be an option. One of my favorite websites is Go Noodle. It's a free website. You can sign up for an account and they have tons of like brain break videos for kids. So they're videos that have them exercising or doing a dance or having them do yoga and it's a way for them to be able to get out their energy while they're inside. Most of the videos are only a few minutes long, but they have these indoor recess videos that are designed for teachers who are stuck with their class indoors that are like 20 minutes long that you could put on to allow them to get out that energy. How do you deal with it? I've, I've seen some parents too saying that their kid is acting out when they normally wouldn't be. And how, like, how do you handle that? I think, you have, I think you have to remember why they're doing that. And most likely it's because their normalcy has been completely disrupted as it has been for all of us. But kids are going to cope with that and handle it differently than adults would. And I think once you can identify what's causing that behavior, then you can figure out a solution. So if it's because they're missing their friends at school, try to find a way to connect them. If they can't be with their friends in person, try to set up like a Skype call with them or FaceTime so they can still connect with their friends. If they're missing their teacher, have a way for them to connect with their teacher. I know personally, I had a student whose birthday was just the other day and he was so bummed that he couldn't see his friends. He couldn't see, you know, his favorite teacher. <laughs> so I ended up recording a video for him and sending it to his parents so that he could view that on his birthday. So figure out what's causing that behavior and then try to find a solution for it. Great idea. Do you think teaching or using this coronavirus and, and what's going on in the world, it, is it smart to use it as a teaching opportunity for the kids? I think it depends how it's done and obviously on the grade level. I think more than anything, one of the silver linings that will come up from this with education is the fact that it's helping not only parents, but also kids to realize that learning doesn't just happen in a school environment. Learning is something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, and it can be authentic. It's just being introduced to these new opportunities and learning from them. It doesn't have to be sitting down at a desk with a book and paper and pencil. There's so many ways to be able to learn. And so I hope more than anything, this experience as difficult as it's been will show parents and kids that learning is something that happens all the time. Are you also thinking too that it's going to give everyone a new perspective and a new appreciation for teachers? I've definitely heard that and I can understand it. I mean, I have an appreciation for the parents that are at home doing this because when I'm in the classroom, I'm given resources, I'm given a curriculum. I've been through years of training in college to be able to handle all the responsibilities that come with teaching. Whereas now parents are suddenly being thrust into this role, which is extremely difficult. And they're trying to balance it with work and other demands that they have as a parent. So while I'm sure it's helping them have a better appreciation for teachers, it's also having me develop a better appreciation for them and what they're doing in this situation because it's equally difficult. That's very kind of you. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people are saying, oh wow, I, I really appreciate my kids' teachers for everything that they do. Uh, Michelle, thank you so much for, for all of your, your tips and advice. It's extremely helpful, I'm sure. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm happy that I was able to help out in any small way that I can. Good luck, and, and I hope you're back in the classroom soon. Me too. <laughs>